So my first question is just to state your name and then today's date. Uh, my name is Joseph Kabwe. Mm -hmm. uh, today is uh, say July 17, 2020. Okay. Yeah. I first wanted to ask about the community that you grew up in and could you describe that to me? Yeah. Originally, I'm from Congo. I grew up in a community in a city called Uvira. Uvira is a city in the eastern uh, part of Democratic Republic of Congo. It's a border city in the east. It's bordering Congo with Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania to the Lake Tanganyika, and the far east, the Zambia country. So we bordering four countries, our community. Yeah. So it's a very welcoming, it's a good city, mm -hmm. very strategic city in mm -hmm. Congo, where even in political uh, aspect, it's very strategic. Yes. In the revolution of Congo, every movement of Congo starts in Uvira. So it was so close to other countries, that means there was a lot of trade and a lot of different languages? Exactly. It's, yeah, it's so close to other countries. All those neighboring countries got different languages. Mm -hmm. And the Uvira is close to all those, all those countries. And a lot of trade are happening in Uvira mm -hmm. because of the borders that we're sharing with those countries. Mm -hmm. So we exchange product and people. So. Mm -hmm people and the product we do exchange a lot so and then we depend on each other mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. the problem is the suffering of one community on one side is affect other side like mm -hmm. this moment of covid 19 the closure of border of congo burundi did not close it mm -hmm. affects congo it affects burundi population in that side and it affects congolese population in this side mm -hmm. whereby they cannot commute easily, freely in Burundi side. Mm -hmm. And there's a closure of the border of Rwanda mm -hmm. and Congo, it affects both communities. Rwandese community are having products they can trade, but they cannot have access to it. As a result, economically, people, the population suffers. So both communities they get affected by the same single uh, situation at yeah. the same moment because of the sharing of the border right. and the, the sharing of the culture. We share the culture mm, mm. also. So you had to know um, a number of different cultures and a number of different languages. What were some of the cultures and languages? Yeah, we, we got area? different languages. Like in, on the side of Rwanda, we got, they speak a Rwandese language, Kenya Rwanda. We call it Kenya Rwanda in our language. Rwandese language. They speak only one language in Rwanda. It's a small country. Mm -hmm. We're all colonized by one uh, colonial power. On the side of Burundi, they speak also another language. Despite also we speak all of us Swahili, mm -hmm. but they got their own uh, original language, mm -hmm. authentic language. Mm -hmm. And the Burundi, they got their language. In Tanzanian side, uh, we border Tanzania with through the Lake Tanganyika. It's a great lake. So Tanzanian side, they speak Swahili. That's, they got different uh, other small languages, but the main language for the entire nation, the official language for Tanzania, is only one. That is mm -hmm. Swahili. And this this language that all of us in Eastern part, we mm -hmm. speak. But mm -hmm. though we got different accents, mm -hmm. but we speak the same language. So we got trade. Mm -hmm. So how many la different languages did you speak growing up? Uh, personally, I speak French. I sp that is the official language. I speak Swahili. It's another official language in my country. But I speak also other dialects. Kifuliru. Uh, I speak Kirundi on the side of Burundi, my country, my neighboring country, and the Kenya Rwanda. Yes. yes. That's five. Yeah, that's five. And uh, there are different dialects that my community speak because my, it's a diverse community. We've got different mm -hmm. tribe, different people of different tribe in my community. Mm -hmm. The same thing applied like here. We've got people of Italian, we've got Irish, we've got, you know, 
so different committee like that. Yeah. So our side there with all our languages, we keep them and the people speak different languages according mm -hmm. to their origin and the tribe. So how did people of different cultures um, interact or get along or work with one another? Yeah, people, exactly people, they, they do interact. They are very peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, initially people were very peaceful before mm -hmm. the situation changed around, the situation changed. Before that, before 1996, we lived a peaceful community, peaceful life. There was no theft, there was no crime. Really, crime rate was extremely low in the entire country. But today, the crime rate in, in Eastern DRC is the highest in the entire country mm. because of those trouble that affected the country. After 1994, I can say, from the Rwandese genocide, that affected my community also. As I said, we're sharing everything, we're sharing the border, sharing the culture and so on. So, because in my community you found some people, the auntie is here, the uncle is on the other side. That's how we live. Right. Yeah, so, in fact, it was a very peaceful country, mm -hmm. very peaceful community. So what happened in 1996? So, uh, after 1994, first, in 1993, there was a war in Burundi. The war in Burundi, there was a change of regime. The president was killed. After that, all the people of Burundi, as I say, we shared the border. Just it's a walking distance, not very far. They, all of them, they migrated to my country, to my community, to move here. We were all able to welcome them. 1994, like a year later, mm -hmm. Burundi and Rwanda also got affected by all, which created genocide. There was a massive killing there. Because there they got two ethnic languages, two ethnic, two tribes, main tribe, Hutu and Tutsi. So they killed each other. After killing each other, there was a massive killing. Massive, of half a million of people died. So the entire population, entire population of the country, Run, fled to my country, to my community in the east. We were able to welcome our community were less than a million, but we were able to welcome more than one million people at the time. It was a very challenging. Every family, every empty spot was full of people. More than half of the population of the country fled to the arts, to the country. So all the country, all the people, all the families had to welcome somebody, a family. There was a lot of children, unaccompanied children. Often those parents were killed. Children fled themselves. Churches were welcoming. All the school were filled with people. We were forced to welcome each other. Mm. And, and in your personal family, did you take in children? Or in my personal family? family, we took more than three families. We took more than three families. We had to integrate them in our family, take them in. Because my father, my father was a World War II veteran. And uh, he survived the World War II. He used to tell us that he, he survived. He used to tell us to teach us about uh, generosity. He used to teach us, tell us about generosity, mm -hmm. how we should be generous to the world because he traveled a lot of countries. He went to fight in many countries and they survived. He said that survive is because of God. He used to teach us God's word. We grew up in a Catholic church, you know, mm -hmm. he taught us God's word. So my father, my mother were very hospitable. And we had a big place, big plot, our, plan, mm -hmm. uh, our compound. We had to welcome, we had a lot of doors. We had to build some more doors to welcome those families mm. because there was no choice. Mm. We had to take in families. Each family had two, two three families to welcome, mm -hmm. to have, to put in your family. There was no job yet. We had to feed them. You had to share the little you had. Not that we had much, mm. but we had to share the little we had with those families. There were a lot of children and accompanied. That way, 
their parents died, their parents got lost during the war, during the genocide, the way to hell. Physically, uh, materially, morally, spiritually, psychologically, we had to help those communities. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's mm -hmm. how you, you need it. And they were in peace. Mm -hmm. So then what, um, in turn, what made your family flee? Yeah, after that war, in 1994, as I said, that there was that war in Rwanda. As I said earlier, that the situation in the other side affects both sides. That situation of the war in Rwanda affected our country. In 1996, it turned the water came in DRC. They had to top of the regime of Mobutu, who was a dictator. He was a long uh, 32 years serving president. There was a rebel movement that was uh, supported by Rwanda and the Burundi to come and top of Mobutu. So the war came, and the, all of us. There was a lot of killings during the war, you know, it's not controllable killing. The whole community, we had all to run away. Mm -hmm. Where to, which direction, where to, some took the direction, different direction. Mm -hmm. According to where the trouble started, the whole, the bombing started, because there was a bombing, they were mm -hmm. bombing the areas. Mm -hmm. You understand, because there was a resistance of soldiers, our Mobutu soldiers. There was a, resist, a lot of resistance and the, until people decided also to integrate their military just to fight. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we had to run, flee mm -hmm. the situation. Mm -hmm. The time we flee, we found ourselves in the same situation that our neighbors found themselves. Mm -hmm. We found in, in the need of being welcomed. Mm -hmm. We had to flee neighboring country. So we had to run like me. And my family first we ran to the southern uh, uh, region of my country. Mm -hmm. That side, the war, we thought the war is going to end. It's not going to reach that side. The war came to that side to run up to Zambia. We fled Zambia. Uh, Lubumbashi? And no, yeah, Zambia? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fled that's Zambia. That's, okay. yeah, first. I went to southern, that's Lubumbashi. Mm -hmm. Kalemi, Lubumbashi. I fled that side. Yeah, okay. what region, yeah. Mm -hmm. Southern region. Because I'm from east, so I had to flee toward the south. Mm -hmm. That's Katanga, mm -hmm. the Tanganyika region, Kalemi, then Lubumba. Then from there, I had, I got I had no choice to go with my family up to Zambia. Mm -hmm. We're welcomed also. All those where we took, we're welcomed mm -hmm. by other families. The same mm -hmm. thing that we rendered to others, we welcome we welcome also by other families mm -hmm. that did not know us. Mm -hmm. We came now as refugees also as a Migrant, we need help, and they were welcome in those families. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's how we did. It was very challenging. Mm -hmm. Everything changed. Life changed. We got no job. Everything changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the situation we found ourselves. And you kept on going south then. Yeah. What 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 year yeah, was yeah, that? Yeah, I kept. Yeah, which year? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I left my, it was October 1996, that's okay. the time the war broke out in October 1996. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the war broke out in my city. Mm -hmm. In October 25, 1996, that's my city. It fell under the rebels control and we had to leave. October, mm -hmm. it was morning Friday, 25, mm -hmm. of, <laughs> 25 of October. Mm -hmm. It was a certain Friday in the morning. The entire city had to leave, entire city. It was also a massive evacuation. Mm -hmm. Middle, it was a flood of people. Wow. Flood of people, yeah, to, to for this, mm -hmm. you know, for, for this uh, survival, mm -hmm. yeah. And so the people from Rwanda that were living with you, did they also then? All of us, too? all of us, all of us. We had a lot of people in the refugee camp because the United Nations intervened mm -hmm. after the family welcomed those people. As I told you, that the way everywhere on road, everywhere on schools, churches, families welcomed. Then some international organization, humanitarian organization intervened. Then they set up some camp, some site for people to be cared for. Mm -hmm. That we call them refugee camp. They set up, they set some camp. They were Caritas Catholic organization, it was a, yeah, it's a Roman Catholic humanitarian organization that intervened. They were uh, Red Cross intervene international. There are a lot of yeah, 
And that was in Congo or that was in Zambia? That's in Congo first. Mm -hmm. In Congo first. Then the time they all broke up in Congo also, mm -hmm. all of us with all those people we harbored, those in refugee, we had to run to flee also again. Same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we fled again. That's how we found ourselves also in different uh, communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a different community, which were very challenging until we came to find ourselves in different countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Found mm -hmm. myself in Zambia. I was forced to uh, Zambia up to South Africa. That's where I raised up my family, my children. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so what happened in South Africa? Now in South Africa the situation wasn't bad because in South Africa South Africa was peaceful, it developed, it's a developed nation. Yeah, I started working with a, another Pax Chris International a founded organization. It's why I created a, an organization in South Africa in Devon, precisely. Yeah, so it was a, that we founded by Pax Chris International in Germany. Yeah, Pax Chris International is a Catholic organization based in Germany. Then mm -hmm. we started training people yeah, in different mm -hmm. topics. Yeah, we're training people in different conflict resolution, peaceful mm. resolution, you know, yeah, peaceful conflict resolution and the democracy, human rights and so mm. on. I started with, I, I created up that structure and mm. my children went to school there. All of, all my children did, don't, don't know my country because left the most, some of them left my country, they were too young and the others were born in South Africa. Mm -hmm. That's mm. how from South Africa I came to this country. Yeah, in terms of my family, uh, I was born in a, a family of eight, okay. where six siblings and uh, two parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our firstborn wife was my sister. One, our firstborn was we had only one sister, and uh, she impacted a lot in our family. Okay. Yeah, uh, as she was the firstborn, she went to school. She graduated after graduating. She got a job. After getting a job, she started now supporting the family. Mm. She stood on the side because, as I told my father, was was a World War Two veteran. Mm -hmm. My my mother was a was a farmer. So mm -hmm. our firstborn supported our parents and they helped us all to go to school and they completed our gra our school. We graduated because of our sister. She, she made a lot of sacrifice for our life, wow. helping the family, helping our parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was her name? My well, sister. My sister's name was Mary Mary Jane, Jane. Mulasi Kabwe. Mary Jane mm -hmm. Mulasi M U L A M U L A S I Mulasi Kabwe. Mary Jane Mulasi Kabwe. She was a dedicated fervent servant of God, Christian, Catholic, mm -hmm. fervent Christian. Yeah, fervent mm -hmm. Christian. She helped a lot. She taught us also how she took it from the parents. She was helping a lot of the families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was taking the responsibility of family at the hospital. She used to visit prison and the hospitals every month. Mm -hmm. Prison and the hospital, helping those who are vulnerable because in our country we have a lot of people who are vulnerable mm -hmm. and especially our communities i told you after the war we have a lot of vulnerable people right our sister despite her she did not have enough means but yeah she was really dedicated to that right. because our father used to teach us about generosity and our mm -hmm. mother very hospitable mm -hmm. parent. she was uh, going out to prison visiting prison every month at least once, mm -hmm. seeing a, a, a hospital every month, taking some stuff to go and help. Yeah, and they would work like that. It's what we're trying to instill in our children. Mm -hmm. I raised up my mm -hmm. children, trying to instill them the same faith that I learned from my parents, my mother, my father, and my elder sister, mm -hmm. because she was our firstborn. Mm -hmm. yes. Passing that down. Yeah, mm -hmm. passing it down to my children. And uh, I praise, I thank God because my children also are taking the same step because they are really very generous. They 
they are trying their best and they are promising to do the best to carry on with that yeah mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. yeah of generosity of helping changing the world changing mm -hmm. helping family changing the family changing nations mm -hmm. that's a great value that we right we right. we learning right. we, and my, we instilling in our children so what I hear you saying is that even though your sister didn't have much money, it was her actions that made her generous and yes. giving to other people, yes. the way that she spent her time. Yeah, she used to spend her time going out to people, mm -hmm. yeah, meeting mm -hmm. people, helping as much as she can. Mm -hmm. She did not have enough money. Mm -hmm. Even our family did not, but because we gracious, our family, our house, we build a lot of houses, so mm -hmm. we're able also to help. Mm -hmm. We grew up with people that we did not know from other family, and they they ended up t taking our surnames. Oh. Yeah, most mm -hmm. of them they took our surnames. They are we were not biologically, we were not we don't know each other, uh -huh. but they because they grew up in our family. Mm -hmm. Everyone in my family brought someone. Mm -hmm. I brought. People who are now my mother's children. I mm. brought friends in my mm -hmm. family. My mother raised them up in my mm -hmm. family. Accepted. My brother also brought someone in. We grew up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our family was really very hospitable, very welcoming. Mm -hmm. No one no one would send out a visitor, would mm -hmm. send out a needy person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We wouldn't uh, look down on people who are in need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not looking down on people when it's that's how we're taught. Mm -hmm. So when um is there any advice that you would give to somebody uh in this community that wouldn't have had those experiences? Yeah, a, a good thing I would advise to people always be helpful to someone in need. Mm -hmm. Everyone is able to help. Mm. No matter how, no matter the little means you got, everyone, we're all created to help. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a means to help. Mm -hmm. So helping, you know, you know, when you help, you know, helping is something, it's a seed that you put. Mm -hmm. It might come back one day, even if you are not on this earth, mm -hmm. it will come back even on your great, great children, even on your generation to come. Mm -hmm. you're, still, you're still gonna get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. helping is very, it's a good thing, seed that we can put to yes. others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we help, when we help someone, help with joy. Mm -hmm. we, we, we took that from Bible teaching, there's more joy in giving than receiving. Mm -hmm. When you give, give with joy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good thing. We are biblical principled people, family, my family, personally, with my children, I instill them also biblical value. Bible is very important in life, mm -hmm. for my life. It helped me. It helped me a lot. Yeah, my parents taught me that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I saw the value of it. Helping is very important mm -hmm. in life. Don't look down on others. Mm -hmm. Don't look down on other people. We're mm -hmm. all created mm -hmm. same way. We're all created the same way. So don't look down on other people. So this is, um, how are you teaching your children um, to have, to continue the values of your parents and yeah. your siblings? Yeah, I teach my children love of neighbor. Mm -hmm. Love of neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't do to your neighbor. Neighbor is a stra any strange person. Don't do to your neighbor what you don't like, you, won't, you wouldn't like to be done to you. Love your neighbor. Give your best to your neighbor. Don't look down to others. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor. I teach them love, lead. Let mm -hmm. love lead mm -hmm. in everything. That's the principle in my life. Let love lead. Mm -hmm. It helps. It can change the world. Let love lead. And my children, I pray, thank God I got my children next year. My two children are growing to graduate their degrees. Yeah, and they, they are taking those teaching along with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one is going to graduate Merwood University, my daughter. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and uh, my son is going to graduate in Bloomsburg University. His degree and my other children they are growing up. And next year, the 2022, my other daughter will have a grade 12, she graduated high school. So I'm instilling all my children. I'm a father of seven. Okay. Yeah, my father of seven, and I'm instilling in my children those values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. love your neighbor, mm -hmm. let love lead. Mm -hmm. It's a very great value that my, I got from my parents. Without yeah. love, you can help your neighbor. Without love, you can help a stranger. You'll be afraid of a stranger. You run away from a stranger who is in need of you. So we need to help each other, accept each other. Accept each other. Yeah, it's a good seat. Mm. So what, what are your children's plans for when they graduate college? Yeah, my children are taking along there. Even today, my children do help. Go out helping my daughter, my children. Sometimes they drive to New Jersey, to New York to look for people they can help. Mm. They always look for an opportunity to give out. Mm. The little they have. Mm. They promise me they have to take that as a value that they have to carry on with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And it's a good thing. I, I'm happy always the time my children, they, they voice, they want to go and help. They say mm -hmm. they need to help. They have to stay, tell me, they have to start where, where they live first. Mm -hmm. They have to start where they live and they spread that love across the world. Mm -hmm. Changing the world, changing life can change the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to switch gears for just a little bit. Um, you've had a lot of different jobs in your life. Can you tell me how you were, uh, tell me about, about them? Uh, uh, back home, back home in my country, I married my daughter, my wife. I was a teacher in a college. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was a teacher. I married my wife with the money of teaching. Mm -hmm. I gave birth, yeah, my first daughter with the money of teaching. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher in a college. Mm -hmm. Then the time I left my country, as I told you, I was working with the International Organic Park mm -hmm. where it was founded by Park Chris International. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so. I, I came to United States, my first job. Right now I'm on the, my second job. First job was St. Joseph Center, where I was working with people in the ID, individuals with intellectual disability. I was very blessed to work with them. It, it taught me, it gave me a good sense of love, showing love, the most extending that love. I was helping children with disability. They cannot help themselves. They cannot take care of themselves. I was helping them, taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, I'm also blessed. I'm working with the veteran. I'm mm -hmm. working with the Department of uh, Military and Veteran Affairs. Yeah, so I'm working with the veteran here in Scranton, where I'm uh, giving up back again to people like my father. I'm very uh, glad to see people, same experience, World War II veteran, Korean veteran. I see different people, it's, they remind me my experience with my mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they remind me, I talk to them, I'm very, always take time to discuss, to talk with them. Mm -hmm. They talk to me, their experience, they, oh, and they, I'm very glad. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad. So, mm -hmm. in United States, I haven't got a different, uh, many jobs, unfortunately, but I got, this is my second job. Mm -hmm. From St. Joseph Center was my first job in United States. And uh, I worked there for almost, I worked there for four, uh, three years, mm -hmm. three years. And uh, now I'm working with a veteran, mm -hmm. a genomic veteran center in Scranton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's more than a year now. I'm going to add my second year working with the veteran. So I'll be mm -hmm. five years in the United States mm -hmm. next year. I'll mm -hmm. be five years. So I'm very glad mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very glad, and they teach me, give me a different experience, working with different environment, working with different right. people. Right. That right. I like. Yeah. yeah. What do you miss most about um, Congo and the place that you grew up? Wow, I miss a lot in my country. I miss a lot. Uh, first, my own food. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had a different food in my country. <laughs> we had a different food in my country. My mom used to bring to cook for us different food. Though we're trying to get some food here, yeah. mm. we're trying to get some food here, yeah, but we go to New York, I buy some local food, and they hear some store here, yeah, 
we buy, we manage to get some local food like a, a sombe. That's a cassava leaves in, in yeah. English. Mm -hmm. Cassava leaves, sombe, we call it sombe in Swahili. Mm -hmm. It's a common food, so common vegetables that raise the sap. All of us, all the community, they eat that sombe. Mm -hmm. Because the mother can be able to get it uh, from just from the farm, get it from the tree and they cook it immediately. Mm -hmm. Use some potatoes inside mm -hmm. and they all use with rice and they, you enjoy a good meal. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. sombe is very good. I miss that food. Here we get some sombe, but they don't taste the same mm -hmm. as in, in my country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got some pondu. We call it in pondu in the western part of Congo. We call it pondu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the east we call it sombe. It's right. mm -hmm. Yeah, because Congo is a it's a diverse country, also it's a huge country, second largest country in Africa. Mm -hmm. We've got different tribe. Mm -hmm. We've got more than 450 tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the yeah. dialect. So yeah. in that side they speak, they call it Pondu. In our side, call it Sombe. It's mm -hmm. good food. I miss mm -hmm. our food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's the, the your favorite thing about where you live now? Uh, yeah, where I live. Uh, here where I live, uh, my favorite thing is very quiet, it's peaceful. I like, mm -hmm. especially this eastern side of Scranton. I like, I mm -hmm. like Scranton. Mm 